Oh yes, hello guys. I'm here in my Mall X shooting. This is my studio, in my YouTube studio for now. Yeah, it's my man cave. Yeah, wifey, she has her cave in the big house. Yeah, but that's a different story. But anyway, the news today is about Tesla supercharger network. You know, we heard the rumors for a while now that uh, Tesla, they introduced this uh, supercharger credit. And today they dropped the bomb. From now on, well, soon, from uh, 1st of January, well, no, 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 I mean, from 1st of April, uh, cars will not have, um, next year, cars will not have free supercharger network. Okay, so let me explain. The cars today, like my car, and whatever car that you order, no later than 1st of uh, January next year, and you have to take delivery of the car before 1st of April next year will still have the same supercharger like um, program where you can drive and charge as much as you like but from there on cars after that you only get 400 kilowatt hour per year as like a free credit and then after that you have to pay a small fee they haven't announced yet how much they say that the, they will announce it this year 400 kilo kilowatt hour is not much at all it is enough for about 1,600 uh, kilometers or 1,000 miles. And I, to put it in perspective, last weekend I spent almost 800 kilowatt hours. That is crazy. You know, not everyone is crazy as me, but um, it's not unusual that um, you spend more than 400 kilowatt hours doing a long trip a weekend. But you see, I, I am active on social media and I see many, many people actually don't they don't use supercharger that much. There was one guy, he said that he used his super, I mean, used supercharger once and then that was like after one year or something. So I guess for most people, you know, um, 400 kilowatt hour plus some extra, and beyond that, you have to pay extra. We don't know yet how much. It's gonna be fine. And okay, you might wonder why the heck do they do this? Well, it is very simple. They haven't said it in the blog post, but it is because of local charging. Yeah, you have taxis and local people who live near the supercharger. They actually use the supercharger as their private, or not private, but the, as their own and the only source of energy. And that is very bad. Uh, let me explain. I'm not gonna like, not, not, I'm not gonna, you know, like do something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me explain, okay. Uh, it's like a, it's not very efficient to sit and wait for supercharging if you can go straight home and charge there. It's a lot better in most countries. I say in most countries. It's very complex. You know, it's not that simple, this problem. But for instance, in Norway, electricity in Norway is so freaking cheap. So when I take a trip to uh, Trondheim, on the way back, about 50 kilometers away from home, I have Nebenes and usually I charge up to so I can get around Oslo when I have to deliver stuff and then I also estimate so that I arrive I don't arrive here with almost no energy I want to have maybe like 50 to 100 kilometers left and that means I often have to charge to close to 90% when I'm Nebenes or like Six, actually not 90, no, 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 60% maybe. Yeah, but I'm not gonna sit there and wait for 90% to 100%. That would take way too long. And it's really, I mean, think about this. Uh, in Norway, if you have to sit and wait for supercharging, like half an hour, you might save um, 50 krone, 50 nook. Uh, that's really bad, uh, like bad hourly rate. It's much better to just go straight home, spend some money on charging at home instead. Now the problem, okay, is that for my house right now, I only have shukos. I can only charge at 10 amp. And Optimus Prime is freaking thirsty, so he consumes like a lot of energy, especially when I have a trailer. So that's the problem for me as the situation is right now. I will get the whole like housing area over here they will they will um, build a new garage and then finally next year finally i will get 32 amp or faster so if i get 32 amp or even 400 volt you know uh, 11 kilowatt oh it's gonna be heaven yeah i'm gonna charge at home then i can just arrive with almost no juice and then just charge up and then next day i will have 
plant the juice. So, um, but you see, the, it, it's really a bad like usage of time to sit and wait for charging if you have, I mean, if you can charge at home or other places. But if you're on a trip, then you have to, you kind of stuck there anyway. So that's a different story. So, you know, Tesla, they want to encourage people to charge at home when they can. And um, of course, when you're on a trip, then you have to use a supercharger. That's the whole point of it. But again, you know, it's not that simple. I guess in the big cities, I don't know, I haven't been too much around, but let's say in Hong Kong or or Tokyo or wherever, you know, the the life, like the lifestyle there is different from, for instance, Norway, where you have like houses and most people they live in condo or whatever. So they, they don't have charging in the in the parking. Maybe they have street parking and and also public uh, charging stations in some places are not that common so there are almost no way for people to get enough charging at home maybe not at all and also at work they don't have that opportunity so no the only way for them is to um, <laughs> charge at the supercharger and I heard I've seen the pictures that some people have to wait for hours to charge up there and that's like pain in the butt but okay I have to give, give them the owner some kudos in Hong Kong, I think in Hong Kong that, you know, they actually, they put themselves through this pain and waiting just so they can drive emission free. So yes, okay, they charge locally, which is bad, but they actually bought a Tesla. And I know if I would, I mean, if I was living in Hong Kong and you know, the price per kilometer for, even if you have to pay for charging is lower than, uh, a gasoline car and heck yeah I mean I charge at Chalamo so that's fine and I would gladly pay for a supercharging if you know because supercharging is like at least twice as fast as Chalamo but okay lots of info here but I'm gonna go back to um, the original um, uh, case here which was another supercharging I'm gonna read the, the blog post here a little bit so um, yeah, Tesla, they said that, you know, they, they're changing the way it works, but okay, so again, let me emphasize, all cars and cars delivered before 1st of April next year will still have that unlimited charging. So that is really good. If you are planning on driving a lot, then I guess it's a good thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, but the prices, we don't know yet. Uh, yeah, actually, there was it wasn't too much info on this blog post, but let's talk a little bit about yeah what I'm thinking because that's also probably why you guys watch this video, right? Because you know every time there's a, some some news and there's always news about Tesla, like the five seat configuration and all the uh, new autopilot, and then people start asking me <laughs> like, what do you think? Can you make a video about this? Okay, I'm gonna make a video. Because I need to figure out what to do with Optimus Prime. Because when, when Autopilot 2.0 came out, I was like, okay, cool, yeah. I might get it in a couple of years, but you know, I don't have to rush to get the new Autopilot hardware yet because it's gonna take many years before uh, software is ready. And I will still enjoy Optimus Prime and you know, do stuff, video blog and uh, yeah, go trips and all that. But the problem now is that if I wait too long then um, the supercharging will not be free for me and I drive a freaking lot I have estimated that in one year I will consume about 40,000 kilowatt hours that's enough I mean that's about uh, as much energy as two households consumes in one year so yes that's a lot so as for me who drives a lot and I do this blogging I do the nimber task and I pull trailer then for me, yes, uh, I would greatly benefit from unlimited supercharging. So, you know, if you're sitting and waiting, uh, thinking about buying a car, I say you better, you better order it soon because uh, if you order it too late and you get to take delivery too late, then you won't be getting the supercharger. Uh, and also that also, that is, this is a good thing for secondhand price because <laughs> all the secondhand Model S still have unlimited charging so uh yeah you know the classic cars they are still worth a lot because of that because of big frunk and stuff 
Yeah, so, you know, because of this, I think I have to change car kind of quick. I didn't expect this because I was just starting to get used to uh, Optimus Prime and now I had to change, like, swap it already, you know, and I was like, what the heck? And then this, this car is, you know, it's supposed to be like special, it's founder's edition, it's like the, the price from the first reform program round, like what, what the heck was like 10 great people who helped me win this car and and now I'm gonna sell it. But, okay, you know, I realized the, the, the like the, the role I have become, like um, I'm a reviewer, I do all these crazy stuff and and I think people want to see me use the newest stuff. So all right, uh, I actually I'm actually in position to do that. So um, you know, I said like, okay, whatever. It is necessary to get rid of this car, not because I don't like it, I love it. So that's why, you know, I consider a Mol S because okay, I use this car a little bit and it consumes more energy than Mol S. Yeah, you know the coefficient is the same, but you know the CDA is higher because it's bigger throttle area and it's heavier, so it consumes more and it's also not as sporty. But still, I love the Mol X. It's just per personal preference. I love the Mol X, so I will get another Mol X, not the Mol S. Yeah, and also because as for now, the Mol X has tow bar, and Mol S doesn't have it yet. So and I do all this crazy stuff with the tow bar. <laughs> So yes, I will get a Mol X and more or less the same stuff, but I have to get pretty much everything. But you know, the best would be a 100D because 100D is more efficient than the P100D or P whatever. But the problem is the 100D is not available. So I have to get a 90D. And I guess, yeah, all right, I'll get a 90D after I live in Norway. So there's no point for me to get like super, super power. Yeah, I can use it once or twice a year when I'm in Germany, and that's pretty much it. So most of the time, you know, yeah, I'm not going to use it. In winter, I can't use full acceleration. I'm going to rip off the, my tires. I have studded tires. So a 90D, 100D, but 100D is not available, so it'll be a 90D then. Yeah, and what I have to do is I have to sell Optimus Prime. It sounds freaking crazy. I only own this car for three and a half months, and I have to sell it already. But that's the only, in my opinion, the only right thing to do because um, I have to get the new car before 1st of April. I hope it's not April joke, by the way, but it's 1st, no, no, that's not April. No, no but you know, before 1st of April, because then I will uh, make sure I get uh, the new autopilot hardware and also supercharging network. And then I'm good, I'm good. I can keep that next car. It's gonna be like Optimus Prime the second or something, I don't know. Uh, maybe I should foil it uh, yellow and call it Bumblebee. Uh, yeah, because then it will fit better to the, you know, I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, but you know, um, <clears throat> so yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of lost track now. <laughs> no, but so I have to get the new car before next year, so I'm ready for for the new autopilot. And but you know the problem is there will always be new stuff for Mol X and S. So next year there will be new features with this car, and you know maybe we see head-up display or whatever. So there, you know, the longer I wait, the more specs I can get on the car. But still, I like I feel that this has to be done. And also, yeah, many people will ask me, will I get the five-seat configuration? Mm, I will probably get the six-seat configuration because the five-seat is good, of course. If you need lots of space, then yeah, go for the five-seat configuration. But the five-seat configuration, the problem is the middle seat. It sucks. Yeah, I've pointed it out many times. And also, these seats can at least be tilted. I mean, they can be adjusted. Not You can change angle, but it's... It has a little bit, they are slightly better than the fixed seat for the five seat conversion. And overall, they cost 25,000 nook more. Or I'm not sure that, like $3,000 maybe, I'm not sure. But they cost more, and they are, you know, before I haven't seen the five seat conversion, but the, I believe that the five seater is not as cool. But it works, yeah, but it will be like more S seats, more or less. 
So if you still value, you know, nice seating in the back, you if you want to sit like first class in the back, you still have to go for six or seven seat. I still prefer the six seat version. So it'll be more or less like the same as Optimus Prime, but a 90D, right? Tow bar, all that stuff. Yeah, even the wind package. Yeah, it's nice. Um, today I actually experienced that. It's freaking cold here, minus six degrees Celsius, and because I had slow charging at home. I wasn't able to charge too much so that um, when I was at work, well, when I came to work and I had like 50, 60 kilometers left, and what happens then? You can't preheat because when you have low state of charge, then you know, to conserve energy, you can't preheat. So I had to start driving with cold battery and everything was cold, but then, yeah, the cold weather package is great. But uh, actually, some other guys, uh, another one of my followers, gave me an idea. What about asking Tesla if I can get, you know, that Model S price for the second round? If I can get that one as Model X? I don't know, I never dare to ask them, but well, let me see how to reset the, the lights. But you know what? I, I asked Tesla, uh, one of my contact persons, I asked them if I can get that price as a Model X instead. But now, you know why I dare to ask them now? Because there is actually an, another referral program going on right now. I haven't bothered you guys with it. I have six referrals right now, a maximum 10. So yeah, if you want to use my link, then go ahead. I'll be grateful. Uh, but anyway, uh, that price, the first price is also a P100D, but you can actually, and it will be a raffle, but the winner can choose whether to get a Mol S or Mol X. And I try to spec up a Mol S and a Mol X to the maximum. And the price is only 5% different. So it's more or less the same. So, And as for Tesla, I think they don't really care if that price is a Model S or X by now, you know? Yeah, so... Uh, but it's a 90D, yeah. But it, I mean, it's a P90D. But the P90D Ludicrous is not available anymore. And they can't just downgrade me to a 90D. So they have to give me a P100D Model S nonetheless. Uh, so yes, so not, actually the plan now is to sell Optimus Prime, spec up if they allow it, spec up a new one as soon as possible, Mol X, get I mean, if they deliver it faster then it's always good. And of course because uh, it is the price I have to spec up everything that means P100D Ludicrous all of that stuff also 22 inch wheels of course I hate them they are horrible but if you get it for free yes of course I will get them and branch banking new I will replace them I and mean, I'll swap them with someone to get the 20 inch slipstream that's the only way to do it unfortunately but um, and why do I hog all these prices you're thinking like what the heck that guy he's like freaking hogging everything unfortunately in Norway we have to pay lots of tax so um, I had to pay tax for Optimus Prime and Optimus Prime the second or whatever I call it 50% tax so uh, I yeah the the first Optimus Prime will pay for itself and the second Optimus Prime um, tax wise that's just how it is in Norway so you know yes of course it would be great to just uh, donate the car to someone but then I'll be stuck with lots of uh, down payment uh, yeah lots of tax I have to pay but uh, yeah and as for you guys if you want to buy a Model S or X you better do it now if you want okay you might not need to drive that far you, you, maybe you don't need you know, supercharging but think about it the second hand price for that car you order will be higher because uh, you can supercharge for free and uh, the next buyer and you know actually eventually if you want to sell a car in a couple of days I mean in a couple of years you might get really good offers because uh, people who are planning on driving a lot they will look for those cars with with the, the unlimited uh, superchargers even though those cars might even be slightly older and might, maybe even those cars are lacking some features because you know what I've seen on social media some people are looking for rear-wheel drive Model S nowadays they're like 
the D is kind of boring for them, so they want to have a little bit of fun in the snow, I guess, so they want them all. As I kind of agree, I went over the mountain with some snow and I couldn't get uh, Optimus Prime to drift like Milena Falcon. Milena Falcon is a freaking awesome car, and it has unlimited supercharger also. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? Uh, this is going to be. A, uh, I will talk a little bit also about the issues about this car. I will, uh, I will not go too much off topic because it's a long topic now, just in one video, and it's getting long. But uh, I should also mention that the issues I'm having with the Model X, and I'm not the only one. So I will make a separate video about it. Uh, I just passed thirty thousand kilometers this weekend, so I, that was my plan to to have enough experience with this car. I'm not going to just make one video about every single um, um, issue I'm having with, with this car because I had some issues with this car and in general yeah there are issues with Teslas so you know you just have to know when you buy a Tesla that there, there it's highly likely that there will be some issues and if you buy Tesla thinking that you won't have any issues then you're gonna be freaking disappointed then don't buy Tesla, buy BMW or something. I don't know, but actually, <laughs> I'm on the BMW i3 forum. They have weird issues there, drive unit problems. They have, like, you, I don't know, qual like stuff that just falls off the car. And they're like, what the heck? And the, the weird issues with i3 also. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not making BMW look bad, but uh, I'm just assuming that other cars also have issues. But anyway, back to the point. Uh, what issues did I have with the Model X? Well, uh, I can at least, uh, if I remember now, okay, drive unit problem. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking, what? With the, with the dual motor? Yes, I have drive unit problem, and it's actually a common problem with the Model X. I don't know, Model X, not Model S. So I already have my drive unit replaced once, and it's still a problem, so I will have it replaced in one week now. Uh, what happens is that during semi, not too hard acceleration, hard-ish acceleration, it it kind of shakes and rumbles the front drive unit. Morgan has the exact same problem, so this is something weird with the Model X. That's why I said it's a common problem, a common issue. But you know, we have like, we have warranty on that, so they have to fix it, and I have to figure out what's wrong with it. And even if the drive unit would break down. I will still be able to drive because the, I have a rear drive unit, so it's like fail safe. Yeah, but yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, the next actually pretty big issue I had was the driver's door wouldn't. I mean, it wouldn't open. It was like suddenly I was even with wifey. I was on a trip with wifey, and then suddenly I was trying to open the door. It didn't open. It didn't close. The car reported that the drive the door was open. It was. Almost, I mean, it was shut, but it was actually leaking a little bit of air. Also, weird stuff like there was something wrong with the latching system or whatever. So, my driver door couldn't open or close. And not only that, but so I had to go through Wi Fi every time to enter and exit. And I was actually on the weekend, I was doing Nimber tasks, and that was freaking embarrassing every time I want to pick up items and whatever and then some people they came on this side and I'm like no, no, I'm gonna go with that side yeah so I actually intentionally parked close to the wall so I'm like yeah I have to go through this side but I didn't want to explain to them all that but it was like freaking oh um, and also that problem I see also many people have problems with the doors on the Mall X automatic doors is fancy but it has some faults and the problem is that once I started driving I got this chime, ding, 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 door open, door open. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tip now. What you do is you you try to enable uh, cruise control or uh, adaptive cruise control. And then it would chime once, ding, and then it's silent. So it's a little workaround for that. Uh, another problem I had was that um, because the car thought the door was open, um, I couldn't lock the door. Yeah, so at night I couldn't lock the door. I tried to use the fob, I tried to use the app, it wouldn't lock because it was like, the door is not shut. But I could use the screen to lock it. So um, I found a trick where, uh, remember I can plug in a mouse? So I plug in a wireless mouse in the, in the front here. 
uh, near the sender and then I took the mouse and then I went outside and then from outside I used the wireless mouse and I press the key the, the lock on the, the corner of the screen and then the car locked I tried to push the button everything and it didn't open so it's a workaround if you guys get the same problem if you have Model X then that trick might work for you and also you know okay okay I tried all the reset stuff I tried everything with the door it didn't open didn't shut yeah what else did I get? oh yeah well another common co common problem was the charging port in the back there uh, it got stuck half open or something so they fixed that also for free of course and uh, also my left uh, falcon wing door uh, about half the time when I try to close it it thinks there's something there it's been like uh, over the updates it's been working great I mean working better and then not working that great anymore so there's some problem with that one so I have to I don't know ask Tesla to take a look at that um, I also had an issue very really, very early about the seat but that I think that's not a common problem because uh, there was like a bad contact with the with the plug to the seat so uh, when I recline back like this and I, I slept and then in the morning I it wouldn't react so the, the seat were kind of stuck in that back position there uh, I found a workaround which was to restart the screen and whatever and then suddenly it worked and I can push forward but they, yeah so they, they fixed that too uh, I had some other problem which is kind of rattling from one of the seats one of the seats only the second row the one I'm pointing at now I think when you go over rough roads it will rattle and that's not very nice and we also have some problem with the, the front wing doors when they close they kind of at least on my car it will rub into the paint in the inside of the door so but you know what to me I'm like oh, whatever okay I'm, I'm that type of person like it doesn't matter to me does it affect my driving my hand handling whatever no nah, whatever like if some of the chrome uh, list are not 100% um, aligned shit, I just cut my nails by the way but yeah if they're not properly aligned then whatever you know unless it causes extra drag then I don't care uh, but yeah so my point is that there are lots of issues with the Model X. I don't have the issues with the Falcon Wing door. I have I heard many people, I met lots of people. When they open the door, Falcon Wing door, they hear like cluck, cluck. So that's a common problem. Uh, what else is a problem with the Model X? Um, I don't know, I can't remember right now, but what I'm saying is that Model X is an awesome car. Of course, Model S is also an awesome car. But if you want to buy a Model X, you just have to you know, have that in your mind that there are some issues it's an early car with new tech and Tesla there you know they will figure it out just like they did with the Model S for instance there was a problem in the early days with the Model S where you know that there's a little lid where you open to put the this this uh, the roof rack thingy and that lid like broke on almost all the Model S I saw they redesigned that and now it doesn't break anymore so that means that you know Tesla they are constantly improving stuff you know fixing not on fixing like issues with existing cars and you know, make sure that those issues are not um, there anymore so you know yes the best would, would be for you to sit and wait before the Model X uh, get you know better build quality but the problem is is if you wait then it's too late you won't get the unlimited uh, charging anymore so uh, I would say if you have the balls for it go for a Molex quickly order it and then you just have to expect to go to the service center to get your problems fixed yeah that's how it is but you know or if you don't want issues then buy another brand German brand or whatever but you know complaining about uh, your Mol S or X having issues, it's like you buy a Bugatti Veyron and then you complain that you have high service cost and the tires cost a lot and whatever, you know. It's just something you have to expect. Unfortunately, it's like that today. It might not be like that in a couple of days. Tesla, I hope they are improving the quality over time. So, um, yeah, wow, it's half an hour now. Yeah, long video. Uh, I think I 
said most of it. So this is my plan for now. Yeah, I also want to hear your feedbacks on you know what we're going to do with Optimus Prime and all that. But I think this is probably the best we can do. And the reason why I'm uploading this kind of late because I had a long talk with wifey about this. It's a big case, you know, with a car. And she also agreed that, yeah, I should get the new autopilot hardware because it's going to be big. Yeah, and also big battery will benefit me also as a hauler. Uh, 100 kilowatt hour battery pack of course the downside is that um, if tesla will let me um, s get that price the second round as a model x the only right way to, for me to do it is to spec it out full and that means going for p90 d p100 d ludicrous which is less efficient than, than the 100 d which is not out yet but i can't wait for the 100 d because then it will be too late <sighs> first run problems yeah all right, I think uh, that's it for now. So thank you for watching. And if you have any comments, then comment below and I will actually try to reply these ones. <laughs> All right, talk to you guys later.